So there is um, some emotional symptoms of loss that are um, universal, that, you know, they're common for most people to experience, regardless of what that loss may be. And so the first one is the shock of the, and disbelief. So it can be very hard for people to accept um, that something has changed or that loss has taken place, whether it be COVID-19, whether it be in breaking up with a partner, whether you've been burgled, you know, or there's a loss of a family uh, member. And what generally tends to happen is people feel numb and a kind of sense of denial. They, they don't want to accept that it's happened. They don't want to believe that it's happened. And they're constantly telling themselves, no, this ain't true. This ain't true. There's also, you know, a sadness, a profound sadness. That's probably, it's a universally experience. I'm sure we can all, you know, lay testament to the fact where we've experienced sadness due to a loss, you know, and it's a symptom of grief. So um, it's like emptiness and that kind of despair and, uh, you know, a deep loneliness, as someone was saying earlier, that people can experience. People may cry a lot and feel emotionally unstable. It's like, I can't cope with this. I can't manage. This is too difficult for me. And then next also comes guilt. So there can be um, regret, maybe for things that were said, especially if someone had an argument with someone and that was the last thing that was said before someone's passed away. Or even if there's been unresolved issues for a long time and you never got to resolve them. You know, there can be a lot of um, guilt and feeling that you should have made amends or you should have done things differently. And even sometimes people take it on themselves to feel that they should have prevented it from happening, even though there was nothing you could have done. But these are the kind of things that people may go through um, when they've ex experienced a loss. And then another one is anger. So people feel angry and resentful. And often with that, there comes a lot of blame whether it's blaming themselves, whether it's blaming God, whether it's blaming the doctors, or even the person that, that has now passed away for abandoning that individual. So there could be a, a, a great sense of anger that just kind of, you know, boils up and unleashes itself in the most, you know, unexpected times and ways. And then there can be a lot of fear, you know, um, with loss comes, you know, a significant amount of fear and worry about the future, about what's going to happen. There's a lot of anxiousness and helplessness and feeling insecure. And with this often can come panic attacks. And panic attacks are, are often when there's an a, um, a onset or a, a quick situation that comes up that causes a lot of panic in the individual. And, you know, the interesting thing about panic attacks is that you know, they're not life-threatening, but people can feel like they're going to die, especially when they have their first one because they don't understand what's happening. You know, and panic attacks can be, um, can be quite traumatic. They normally last between 20 minutes to an hour, but in rare cases, people can have cluster um, panic attacks where they have continuous ones. I actually know someone who has had like seven-hour um, cluster panic attacks you know, which can be quite um, debilitating. So, you know, loss affects people in different ways with a range of symptoms and feelings um, that can come to head as a result. And I think, you know, it's important to, to recognise and understand that people can have all types of unusual feelings, you know, um, whether it's feeling like they're going crazy, uh, like the world is spinning around them, like they're in a bad dream. And quite often people can question their own morals and their beliefs and what they stand upon, you know, when they're going through the initial stages um, of managing and trying to deal with a loss that has occurred. 